Hello, this is Marsha LaCour, host of Marsha's Moments with Men. And today with me, I have a very special guest, my dear friend, Benjamin Stone. Benjamin, how are you today? I'm awesome. Thank you so much for having me again. I love coming on this show. And today we're going to be talking about success and productivity for men with optimal health. So Benjamin, take it away. What do you have to tell your, your viewers today? Sure. Well, that's a really great topic. And I guess to start it off, I would say that we need to look at the four pillars of wellness. So they would be physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. And so what I think we can do is we can break down and look at the specifics under each one of those. But something I would also like to start with sort of as a caveat is that one's success should be and productivity should be um, based upon um, one's previous position. So if I'm here today, I'm in competition with myself to go to the next level. I don't need to be in competition with um, the, the statements that I'm necessarily going to make, such as, and I just want to throw this out there, if I was to say to you, the only way to success is that you're going to have to cut out, cut out GMO foods, um, then I've suddenly realized that I've alienated and made you uncomfortable for where you're at because you don't even know what I'm talking about. And so um, that's the first thing to keep in mind because I believe that there's a good, better, best in this um, process. Um, and the other thing I want to keep in mind for you to know is that you may see examples today in your life where someone is having high success and productivity but when you look at the other areas of their life, there's lack of balance. And so over time, you're going to have a curve that's going to lead to ultimately the loss of that original success factor that you're looking at, which may be uh, finances or a large company. Or even for that matter, if we looked at another angle of the, the, the four pillars, such as oh, they have such an incredible social life and, you know, great relationships. But again, if you're not balancing and looking at all of the all of these legs of the table, then we know that one of the legs is going to wear down or the other three, the table's going to fall over. And eventually that one leg you're working from is is also going to wear down. And so you're on a slippery slope. So um now, can you tell us what those four pillars are, please? Yeah. So, again, those four pillars are physical. So those are things like um, food, so your diet, uh, and exercise. And so if we look at those two in particular under um, uh, nutrition or fuel for the body, because you are what you, you eat literally so your body needs um, a whole plethora of vitamins and minerals and phytochemicals and phytonutrients and actually a whole bunch of things that i think we're we're still discovering bit by bit by bit by bit but if we break it down to those um, simple things um, also protein carbohydrates fats but then how they all break down further um, the body is going to need dense nutrition in order to achieve that. So if you're consuming devoid um, type of diet, which I would say is going to be um, missing fruits and vegetables in particular, uh, um, and mostly processed non-plant-based um, diet, then you're eventually, again, this, this scale, you could start at success and say, well, I was, you know, I was born for all intents and purposes with everything I needed. My mother ate healthy. I consumed everything I needed from breast milk. Again, that's another topic. But um, so over time, as I'm not eating healthy, I'm really just taking my health in a, a declining uh, direction. 
And so that's going to affect my overall success in all areas of my life because energy is going to end up being consumed uh, trying to, you know, bring uh, balance to an area of disarray. Uh, that's also going to include hydration, which is uh, absolutely essential. I like actually having people consider adding in multivitamin, multi-mineral um, supplements. Now, my caveat to that is know your source, um, do your research, try to find naturally occurring standards, um, whole plant-based uh, uh, solutions, uh, many people have issues, um, folate um, metabolism issues. So you, you stay away from uh, folic acid and look for uh, folate or 5-MTHF or calcium folinate, this type of thing. Um, and that's a topic for another time, but we're looking at trying to optimize your, your well-being. And then exercise, of course, is important. So strength training is really important, not just for building muscle, but it also is essential for bone health. It strengthens the bone. And so without muscle, without bone health, you're going to have, uh, again, a declining body that's not going to be there for you in the long run. You're going to have eventually slower metabolism. You're going to end up with more fat on your body. So if we're looking at men, uh, which is what we are doing in this case, um, you know, men over time without doing um, physical exercise, as we often see, there's a decline in testosterone. And then you ultimately end up having a higher um, estrogen level in time. Now, all of this is also related to where one's genetics are at in terms of methylation and conversion, et cetera. But just keeping it real simple, the more fat you end up accumulating on your body, the more estrogen that starts being created on your body. And ultimately the more sort of weak and feminine, shall we say, you start to look. So that's why men get boobs and her breasts. Absolutely. You get the man boobs, you get, yeah, exactly. You get, and we're seeing that all over the place. And that again is another topic, but related in the sense of like, you know, uh, under the physical, we was my next point is detoxification and okay. So the medical system would argue, well, your body's detoxing all the time. Okay. Like that's just happening. Well, that is true. It's certainly doing its best to do that, but we have a greater onslaught of, of uh, chemicals and heavy metals and just other toxins that are all around us, be it plastics and estrogen mimickers and, um, you know, pollution in the air. Oh, mold, for example. I mean, that's my story in particular. And so there's, you know, just a real quick tip. It's 24% of the population of the world has a genetic susceptibility to mold. And I'll tell you what that means. And 21% of the world population has a susceptibility to Lyme disease. And so in both of these cases, um, in the mold case, the immune system doesn't have the, the understanding, to keep it simple, to tag and create antigens to the mycotoxins from mold. So over time, it builds up in the body. And like Lyme, that also leads to this SIRS, chronic inflammatory response syndrome, you have 21% um, of the population who, if they get the, the Lymes, they are at a very low likelihood of the antibiotics working for them. And so they end up with what they call post Lyme syndrome, where perhaps the Lyme is showing that it's gone, but they're still very unwell, which is, you know, what I'm going through. And that is because the immune system just can't tag the, the, the biotoxins that are coming from the Lyme. So you have to obviously advocate for your health, but you need to be doing certain um, steps to better understand your physical well-being 
and doing detoxification. And that is just supporting yourself at certain times with things like fasting or intermittent fasting, or I'm not a big fan of the ketogenic diet. And I have a, you know, a lot to kind of go against that, but in very short, uh, uh, bouts, it shows, uh, you know, some very valuable use there because as you're starting to burn fat, which is where the bulk of toxins are stored, they're going to be dumped back into the bloodstream. So of course you're going to be needing to use binders and your charcoal and sometimes prescription based or bentonite clay, so on. And so now, can I stop you there? Can you tell people what is intermittent fasting and what are binders? Yes. So intermittent fasting is really about, we've always sort of been doing intermittent fasting. And what I mean by that is um, through many different sources over the years, be it religious or otherwise just spiritual in general, it's this idea that you really should stop consuming food at sundown. And then you go, you know, 12, 16 hours until you start eating again. So the vast majority of the time um, that you are alive here on planet Earth is in not consuming uh, food. And so that's really in simplicity what intermittent fasting is. It doesn't have to be at sundown, although there's a lot of, you know, uh, shown reasons as to why that would also be good. But putting your, um, your um, feeding into a narrow uh, space of, you know, five to eight hours max. Um, is like from amazing. noon to eight o'clock sort of thing, right? Absolutely, yeah. So- um, And then so, binders? So binders, okay. So binders are um, things like activated charcoal, uh, bamboo, kaidazan, bentonite clay, um, pharmaceuticals like cholestyramine, uh, well coal, these bind toxins. Um, okay, we so just lost you there. We just lost you there. Can you go back to pharmaceuticals? Yeah, and so pharmaceuticals would include uh, cholestyramine and uh, well coal, or in Canada, they call it lodalis. Now, the latter two, the pharmaceuticals are used specifically for um, cholesterol lowering. And that is because um, bile binds a lot of different toxins. And one of the toxins that it binds, as well, I'll share this, is mycotoxins from mold. So what happens is when that, those toxins get dumped into the small intestine and get uh, the bile will be reabsorbed um, in the in the colon again, and often what happens is if they're not tagged to to not be reabsorbed, i.e., in the case of someone with biotoxin illness with that genetic defect, the mycotoxins are reabsorbed back into the bloodstream, and the body then is tired and has to deal with this again. So by using binders, we now go in and grab the. Well, in the case of pharmaceuticals, you grab the bile and you just take everything out. And so there's no chance of it being pulled back in. Um, in the case of other natural binders, um, there's an affinity by the different binders to attach to different substances. For example, IMD is really great at binding heavy metals, in particular mercury. Um, Activated charcoal is a good overall well-rounded binding, you know, almost everything. And so if you end up with a bind, get a binder that has a whole mix of different uh, binders in it, then um, you help to expedite um, uh, toxins in your body that are naturally being moved along. But what's happening just to add this in for a moment, what's happening is that the toxins, you're consuming toxins, you're breathing toxins, your thoughts and beliefs create toxins because we are a pharmacy in, in of ourselves. So 
stress and, and uh, you know, negative thoughts actually create all these neurochemicals. That all has to be detoxed out of the body. And so, and the body does its best. Let's say that you're in optimal health and it does, but it gets down into the, the intestine and you're now eating processed food. You're eating lots of constipating uh, types of food. You're not hydrated. Well, what's happening is all those toxins are, are going through the passageway and there's a chance for a few things to happen. One is going to create inflammation in the intestines. The inflammation in the intestine is going to make you not feel well. The gut brain connection through the vagus nerve is going to then have you not thinking clear. It's going to have you not making the best decisions. It's going to have you, you know, having emotional outbursts or you're depressed. Okay. So there's a whole plethora of things that can happen. In addition to that inflammation attacking that single cell epithelial layer. Um, in your intestines where the food goes through is the tight uh, gap junctions they start to open up and so now these toxins can start to slip through again back into the bloodstream now the immune system starts freaking out and so what's happening when the immune system freaks out it might start attacking the brain as well and so how are you going to be you know have have high productivity and be successful when you are causing more havoc upon your body that you don't need to. Now, am I suggesting that everyone needs to be taking, you know, binders prophylactically? No, not, not necessarily, but they fit into a place of people who have known uh, genetic susceptibility, people who are going through illness and trying to detox, um, I highly recommend that people are consuming a lot of fiber um, because fiber helps to continue to push this out as quickly as possible. But now, what are some foods that have fiber, everyday foods that people that men can eat? Absolutely. Well, I mean, the the plant uh, the plant kingdom is the way to go. Uh, long and short. So your meat's not having fiber, your your whites are not having fiber. I mean, if you're eating rice, and I know some people say, well, don't eat, you know, brown rice and wild rice for various reasons. But let's just uh, go with certain types of grains, such as brown rice and wild rice, very high in fiber. Um, I'm personally a big fan of so I'm gluten free, um, for various reasons. And I do. I have missed um, spaghetti. Like I, I am a honorary Italian as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> and, and so I haven't been able to do any of that kind of thing. <laughs> so um, I'm in there with you too. I'm gluten free. And so, so what, what do you suggest for people who are want to be an honorary Italian, enjoy their Italian food, and still want to be gluten-free. What do you suggest for men? Well, I don't know that you're able to do um, exactly everything that the Italians do. Um, well, can I jump in here with something? Mm -hmm. So I have a spiralizer. A spiral so if you take a vegetable like a zucchini, and there's a special gadget called a spiralizer, you attach it to one end, you turn a handle, and it creates zucchini noodles or zoodles. Yes. And then yes. you can throw, it's raw. Yes. And that's what I find really satisfies anything Italian. So I, so I consider myself to be an honorary Italian. And with that, I don't miss pasta. I really don't. I feel that's very satisfying. So I just, that was just. Yes. A well, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of that and doing the, um, the raw vegan approach to that. You can also then cut them you know, thin and lengthwise and create uh, your lasagna and so on and so forth. But if you're looking to make it a little bit, it's not that that isn't simple, but sometimes when we're talking to people who are going from, you know, traditional ways of eating to that, they go, oh, good God, I, you know. I know. Yeah. And then the other thing too, you know, I think there's like, where are, where are people now how can they become better and then they're best? And I think 
where people are now to take them to their best is just too much of a, a leap. One thing I want to say, so let's say people want to start cutting back on pasta yes. and they're not willing to go pasta free. Yes. I think there are certain things that they can do. So for example, I was in some health food store, some store this week, and I saw bean pasta. I think it was called black bean pasta. Now yes. for some people that might be, oh my gosh, shuck, black bean pasta. I'm not sure. The point I want to make is there are alternatives. Yes. Now, do you want to talk about why are you gluten free? And obviously for you, uh, you're not pro gluten. And, and why is that? What is it about gluten that makes so many people choose to be gluten free? Yeah, that's really great. And, and what comes to my mind is a, a meme that I saw, well, many times, but I saw it yesterday again. And that was, we're not gluten free. We're glyphosate, or we're not allergic to gluten. We're allergic to um, glyphosate, and so. And what is glyphosate? Glyphosate is uh, known also as Roundup. It's uh, the active component in weed killer and sprayed on, like anything that's conventional. So it's uh, like a herbicide. It is. That's correct. Okay. And so what they have discovered with this is that it's seven times more um, deadly on your intestinal tract. So it creates that uh, quote unquote leaky gut. It, it harms and creates inflammation in the gut. Okay. And when you say they discovered it was seven times more, who is yes. they? Um, okay. So the best place to go for this particular research is I would go check out Dr. Zach Bush. And he will go through, you'll find from there, if I'm a big uh, fan of researching the National Institute of Health or PubMed, um, Green Med uh, Info is also a great place. But those first two that I mentioned, it's really incredible because when you go there, you can cut through the, pardon my French, the bullshit that is touted by everyone let you know never mind the medical community where we often you know are giving uh difficulty towards their lack of awareness okay do you America. want to start we just lost you so go back to go back a sentence sure um i like the i was talking about pubmed and the national right. institutes of health and those are really great place to find actual hard science um, that will refute or confirm a lot of the information that's thrown out there that just isn't um, necessarily true. So for example, um, for example, here's one that's going all over the place is this bone broth. Oh, everyone should be on bone broth. The, you know, the ancients did it, our grandparents did it, you know, it so healing on the gut, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Well, there's other, uh, some other things that are worth noting. Um, bone broth can often be high in heavy metals because the heavy metals are then concentrated in the bone. And so as you break that down, you're now pulling out those heavy metals. So do you really need that? But here's the bigger one that's really important. Everything that's taken into your body is broken down and digested and then rebuilt in the areas that it's needed. So there's this thought that, okay, well, if I take the bone broth, I'm gonna get, you know, the glycine and the L-glutamine and some other amino acids, collagen, and that's going to heal my gut and be good for me. Okay, well, there's some truth to that, Never mind the negative, you know, toxins that may also join the club, but, the fact of the matter is, if you get in amino acids, period. So if you're, again, if you're vegan and you're covering all of your essential amino acids through things like sprouts, for example, and, and kale, um, just to name a couple, that's going to be absorbed and your body's going to say, okay, I've got the tools to go repair the gut today. Or it might say, just like the bone broth, it might say, well, thank you. I do need to fix the gut, but 
I'm a little short on neurotransmitters today because, you know, the brain's having a hard time. So I'm going to take the fuel and I'm going to build um, those essential uh, uh, transmitters, those essential components of good health. And so what I'm trying to say is to jump back for a moment to dense nutrition and deciding what you put in your mouth. Because if you're not getting a maximum amount of nutrition and it needs to come from nutrients, okay, nutrition, nutrients that are essential to you. If you're not getting those building blocks from your food, then where do you think your body's going to get it from? It's going to either shut down processes, it's going to start to cause disease, it's going to remove it from bone or wherever it can find these minerals. And ultimately, that's going to lead to a weakened immune system. And then, you know, lo and behold, you've got a pathogen that you're dealing with as well. And, and that's not even going into sort of genetic susceptibilities, um, which are not, um, you know, genetics, just to be clear, doesn't mean that it's happening for sure for you. Um, but that it's important for you, it's helpful for you to to kind of understand that that could go in that direction and that there are certain nutrients that will just keep you in balance. And that is a whole food plant-based diet at the end of the day. So to go back to your question on the gluten, you know, yeah, I don't want to destroy my gut, but ultimately I stopped the gluten. I'm a bread lover. Like I said, I love the Italian. I, love the, I would love right now to have like a nice big uh you know croissant or something like that but the thing is this um the gluten in it and looking at my own genes i was in a medium susceptibility sort of a later in life likelihood towards celiac disease so what happens in my particular condition of chronic inflammatory response syndrome is gluten exacerbates the immune system and causes it to to freak out. And so if I'm exposed to gluten and eat it every day of the week, I get severe brain fog. I can't think and I feel like, you know, I'm having some kind of a, you know, an encephalitis, a, an inflammation of the brain. And so I just don't for that reason alone, because I don't feel uh, good on it. Um, if I could eat it, I would eat it sparingly, mostly because of this glyphosate situation. I have stories of clients in the past who are celiac confirmed and who tried food in South of France and in Italy and have no issues. So the non-GMO wheat, the, 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 you know, it's a non hybrid hybridized uh wheat and grains and it's it's not covered in glyphosate so this is really valuable information that we need to really understand so that we can you know question what is going on at you know the usda the epa health canada etc now let me ask you this so for someone who doesn't have work-life balance is very successful in their business. And when I'm talking about successful, I mean, they financially, they're doing very well in their business. They have clients, they're opening up, you know, they're expanding in different territories. And yet they know that they do not have work-life balance. What would you recommend for somebody? Now, I know you would, you would do an, in, I mean, if this person came to see you, or people of that persuasion came to see you, you would do an intake with them. And, and so it's individualized. I understand that. But yes. generally speaking, what are some tips that you could make in terms of general recommendations for people who, for men who don't have work-life balance and want to sort of get better from where they currently are? Are there some general recommendations that you have? Well, then we, you know, this is going into ultimately the other legs of the table. So, um, you know, mental, emotional, spiritual. So under things like mental is, you know, not just brain health, um, but everything to do with how is my thinking? 
what types of, you know, really self-reflection is important and being open enough to see the mirrors of the reactions of the people outside of ourselves, and also being very open to hearing the comments and feedback from other people. At least it allows you to um, be be in a situation where you can say, well, that is me or that is not me. You know, don't overanalyze and, and create all kinds of, you know, roadblocks and paralysis by doing that, that process. But at the same time, it's very valuable. And as a side note here, this is kind of the problem, folks, with, you know, politics. And if you're watching any of the garbage in the United States, you've got one side, and, and in some cases, both sides that completely refuse to actually have an open dialogue together and say, well, you know, maybe I get your point and, and take that. So that kind of self-reflection is huge. In addition, try to avoid things like having, um, you know, cell phone and EMFs and Wi-Fi blasting at your body um, all the time, because that is also affecting um, your mental state. I, um, I, I've dealt with this to a great degree, again, because it influences um, my immune system to overreact, particularly because of what I'm going through at this juncture. And therefore, I'm very sensitive to that. So I'm a huge fan of, I use something called the Blue Shield. Um, you can go check it out. It's a plug-in and it sends out harmonizing frequencies that your cells will resonate with. And I have to tell you, I have, I, I'm not affected when I'm inside the house at all. Wow. And, and I was having, I was having fatigue and all kinds of stuff. So that's important. Um, emotional, the emotional is very similar to the mental, but it's again, looking at, you know, how am I responding to things? How are the, what are the people like in my environment? Am I, you know, not um, respecting my own boundaries, you know, let alone disrespecting others? Am or I do I, or do I even have boundaries? Do I even have any? Yes, exactly. And in that book um, that I spoke about recently, Stop Walking on Eggshells, there's this interesting, did you still have me? Okay. Like can you go back to boundaries? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Go back so, to. Yeah, so in Boundaries, there's the uh, this book I spoke about called Stop Walking on Eggshells. And in that book, they talk about boundaries like this. Some people have rigid boundaries. Some people have very flexible, non-existent boundaries. And then, of course, a healthy place would be to have boundaries that have some flexibility. Because that allows, obviously, you know, things that are going to happen in life that you better just start to accept right now that that's going to happen. And then you have, you have your boundary, but of course that flexibility is such that you can make some executive function, you know, decisions that say, well, okay, I, I can, you know, accommodate this a little bit, or I, you know, I'm totally not going to accommodate it. So looking at that is hugely important. I'm not a huge fan personally of, um, you know, rear view mirror um, looking into the past. Like, sure, I can tell you a, a wonderful story right now. People are always captivated to, you know, learn things like I was beaten and hung upside down and told that, you know, if I did, you know, if I told my mother this would happen to me all the time. Yeah, they're atrocious. They certainly happen during a time in my life when it would program who I am, which again, the value of this conversation is it programmed me to have the boundaries on the unhealthy permeable side. And so for me, it was like, well, I'm afraid of authority. I'm unworthy. Uh, in order to receive love, I need to basically bend over backwards and do whatever anyone says. And so, you know, just using that as an example, look at that. Is that the type of thing that's happening in your life where you are being 
uh, either completely inflexible or you're being way too flexible. And um, so, yeah, look, look at the past because it could be affecting you. But again, my only caveat around that is I personally don't recommend bringing that stuff up so that you can continue to project that story in, into the future and relive it. No, no, no. If you're being affected now and you're looking at the situation in your life and you're saying, huh, I wonder why I X, Y, Z. If you take some, which falling under the spiritual where I put meditation, but meditation is a, a very important practice that we can just bring in here now. So if you can sit in that space and meditate, even five minutes in quiet time, just observe what's going on or ask a question before you go under. Why, why is it that I, I react every time you know, uh, whatever, my wife tells me to do X, Y, Z. You will get an answer. And that answer, yes, in this case, might come from the past and go, oh, yeah, my dad was actually quite an asshole to my, my, my mother. And so I'm just, you know, reacting the exact same way that he did. And it's in that awareness, consciousness, and self-awareness that you now have the, the capability to change. If you know better, you can do better. Right. And, and the first thing is to be aware. Absolutely. That's the first step. And then when you have the awareness, then you can learn the tools to sort of make those shifts. So I think, you know, this has been a wonderful opportunity for men to really get a handle on some of the profound um, knowledge that you have shared with us today. Is there one closing statement that you want to leave with us, Benjamin? That's a great question, to be honest. Um, I think the most important thing that we can be doing at this time is to really step back, listen, 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 listen. and then pause and then respond to the things that are going around our world, at least here in North America at this time, because men have an obligation, as far as I am concerned, to properly steer the boat. And we want to co-create that journey with our female equal counterparts. And I am really personally not um, happy with the vilification that seems to be happening around white males. And so I think it is our duty to listen, pause, reflect, and communicate back so that we can get through this as a healthy father would to his children, uh, to his wife, and to have open dialogue and communication is the only way we're going to get out of this mess and make some changes. So that, that's what I have to say. Now, how can people get in touch with you if they want to reach out to you? Sure. Uh, so you could go to uh, healtheducator.ca. I have a uh, free consult, 15 minute consult, if people want to start there. Um, I'm happy to uh, be found and private messaged on my, my Facebook page, Benjamin Jonathan Ulysses Stone. You'll recognize this gorgeous mug, so don't worry about uh, trying to find that. <laughs> and of course, you can send me an email, bstone at healtheducator.ca. Um, but ideally, if you really want to um, work with me, then uh, book a time in at uh, healtheducator.ca. And the other thing, there was something I was going to say. Mm, oh, yes. Can you put your uh, website link under the comments on my page? Absolutely. I'll do that. And then I'll share it to your page, Great. this interview, and then you can 
post it there too. So Benjamin, once again, I want to thank you for joining us here today. This is Marsha's Moments with Men, special guest, Benjamin Stone. Thank you again. Thank you.